Good morning, everybody, and welcome to Success Life Live. My name is Eric Reed, and I am your coach, and I am glad you took a moment to join us for Success Life Live. Whether you're watching it live or in the replay, welcome. So take a minute and introduce yourself. Say hello, say good morning, say what your favorite Thanksgiving feast treat is, or just simply hit hashtag replay if you're coming in later. Good morning, Miss Allison. See, got the book here, girl. I was just gonna talk a minute about it. So uh, good morning, Xenia. Good morning, Allison. I know Allison's probably huddled down in Wisconsin in a snowdrift uh, with her big fluffy boots and her cozy blanket and her fire started and kids running in and out all wet and soggy because that's what happens this time of year up there. Um, good morning, everybody, and welcome. I love pumpkin pie. You know, that's the big debate. Pumpkin pie versus sweet potato pie here in the South. And people think they're the same thing and they are not. And I was talking to somebody the other day. We're on a Thanksgiving food trick for a moment. Um, I was talking to somebody the other day and I love rutabaga pie. I haven't had like true rutabaga pie in forever. Um, not the strawberry rutabaga or cherry rutabaga pie, the true traditional rutabaga pie. I don't know. So, and I hate pecan, pecan, whatever you call it, pie. It's just too sweet. Now they got this chocolate double dip pecan pie. So, ugh. anyhow, on with Success Life Live for the morning. I'm glad everybody took a moment to jump in, say good morning, say hello. I know many of you have already sent me a message saying, um, see, see, Allison, you and I, we're like kindred spirits, as Anna Green Gable would say. Um, a lot of you have said that you'll catch the replay because it is pre-Thanksgiving day. And good morning, Jean. I hope you are well. Um, good morning, everybody else. So uh, really quick, want to dive into this. Then we're going to go into the lesson. <laughs> Just let it go, folks. Um, that's our lesson today. Just let it go. Um, so the month of November has been a busy read month. So we started off with um, Allison's book, The Art of Imperfect Action. All success comes from daring to be different. If you haven't read it, get it. Really, I loved it. Really enjoyed it. But she, um, the recovering perfectionist that she is, she realized that she could accomplish more, have more, be more, and live life more by just being imperfect now and then. Um, and then um, Larry, who will be on our author talk, which will be on Wednesdays at 7 p.m., um, and Allison, we may have you back. Uh, your life matters, and um, how to get out of life, how to get out of the life you don't want and live the life you do. It was really I, I had never thought of it in the subtitle context of like we're living lives that we don't want, but nobody's ever told us how to get into the life that we do want. And so through Larry's book, uh, Your Life Matters, he walks through that. Um, I know I'm just a reading freak. Which reminds me, if you're an author, know an author, um, and want to send your book, I'll be happy to read it, and then we'll put you on author talk, and we'll talk. Um, Sebastian Richards, you know this was like, I, I was all on this book. I was all on this book. What pop culture icons can teach us about impactful leadership? You know, it's a superhero. It's got Aquaman, and Superman, and Iron Man, and... Nick Fury and Wolverine and Captain America. It's got all the superheroes in it and it talks about leadership. What a mashup, what a mashup. So he'll be on author talk as well. And then um, read, uh, so Eric, Eric Kay's book, Let Me Sell You Something, uh, Chief Success by Closing More Sales and Building Long Lasting Relationships. Okay, so this was a serious read. This is all about B2B business building, how to sell, what to do, the process, the techniques. Um, just a really good salesman book, you know, and we all, uh, in truth, are salesmen. And um, Eric's a master salesman. I mean, he's a high achieving salesman. And so in this book, he talks about B2B sales and he'll be on author talk. And I talked to him last night after wrapping up reading it and I said, you know, you need to do a B2C, a business to consumer version because you get and he laughed and he said, actually working on it now. So he'll probably let us in on that as well. So these will be the author talks coming up um, through December and November. If you are an author writing a book, written a book, 
um, send it to me. I'm happy to read it, and then we'll have you on Author Talk, and we get to share it. I love Author Talk because, like with Allison, I got to hear the story behind the story. And so, and I got to meet the author and listen to the author and the conversation. So it was really good. So um, that was will be posted later in the week on Author Talk. And so on today's Let It Go Already Success Coaching Live lesson. So pull out your thinking caps, pull out your notepads, pull out your pen and papers. It's time to get our learning on. Again, my name is Eric Reed. I am a coach. I work with people um, to help them break through the barriers that are keeping them from living their life of success. So Again, let it go already, folks. As I had said in the caption, if you're holding on to last year's insult or five years ago comments and you know, you're know you preparing for those holiday ho feasts and festivals and going to business meetings and going places and you're sitting there going, well, I don't know. Cindy said this about me. Allison said that about me. Steve said this about me. You know, I still haven't let that go. I'm still not letting that go. And we build up this, this, this power around a comment or a statement or something that somebody said. And every time you revisit it, you're adding power to it. You're giving strength to it. You're giving fuel to that fire. And you're actually, in a way, affirming what they said. You know, if I said something about somebody and they held on to it, they must believe there's some truth to it or they would have been able to go, eh, that's not me, wrong person. It's kind of like when I go out to the mailbox and we recently bought the house and every so often I'll get a letter and it's still addressed to the own occupant. Now I don't open it, I don't read it, I don't like, you know, return, pay the bill for them because it's not addressed to me. That has no like relevance. Like I'm like, sorry, wrong, wrong person, return to sender, not me. The same thing when, when somebody says something about me, whether it's about my career, my fitness, my finance, my family, and they be talking that talk at the tables or, you know, over there in the corner at the holiday pre thing or whatever. And I hear it. I have two choices. I can adopt it. I can let it live in me. I can let it sit in me. I can let it like marinate all over me. I can be like, well, I can't believe they said that about me. It can't be true. <laughs> Boo hoo hoo. I can be looking at it and go, eh, return to sender. Not me. But we prepare to go into this holiday season, into these Thanksgiving feasts, into these fa family gatherings, and we're like, you know what? If Aunt Ruth is there, I, I still ain't forgiven her for what she said at our wedding. I'm, do you, you know, if Uncle Bob's there, I ain't forget uh, sh what he said. Mm, I'm never gonna let that go. Let it go, folks, let it go. It's poisoning the water that you drink. <laughs> you can say about it. I can say about you. Ah, thank you, Allison. I'm sorry, I couldn't read it quick enough. Um, it's poisoning the water that you drink. They, they have forgotten it. They have let it go. They slipped it off their tongue. They dropped it in your plate. They walked past you and said it and didn't give it a second thought because that was the nature of them. But you have picked up that stick and you have put it in your pack and you have carried it and carried it and carried it. And you have waited for a chance to pull it out and go, hey, you remember when you said this about me? At our wedding, look at us now. We're successful. Look at me now. I'm skinny. Look at me now. We've paid off our bills. Look at me now, my kid. Why? Why do you need to prove to them that what they said was untrue? Because at the time they said it, it had to be untrue. Or it had to be true, and you've adopted and made it your own. I, I sort of think of it in this way, that when somebody says something about me, if I let it go in, and then it begins to filter down because I got, you know, I hear it, and then I got to repeat it in the car ride home. And I'm like, you know what so-and-so said about us? So then I begin to speak about it. Then I begin to feel about it. And then it begins to grow in me and grow in me. And it takes up space and it takes up energy and it takes up focus. And it becomes who I am and it almost lives in me like an affirmation. Well, that one time so-and-so said this about me. Oh, that one time such-and-such such thought this about us. You know, at that one time... And it grows and it grows and it begins to crowd out the things that I know are true about myself. It begins to crowd out my dreams, my, my hopes, my desires, because I can't let it go. It seems like a negative seed, a negative thought can grow faster than a positive one. We seem to feed and water and nurture those negative thoughts, those negative ideas, those negative conversations 10 times more than we do the positive ones. I don't know why it's human nature. And pretty soon we begin to live into the things that they proclaimed over us. And I, 
I decided long ago, here's what I know. You can speak words over me, but they don't carry the, word, the power of the word that was spoken over me in the beginning. You can say what you want about me. You can talk about me. You can live about me. You can, you can like, mm, but you know what? A word was spoken over me before you even existed. A word was gifted and granted to my heart, to my, my soul, my desires that you don't even know. So go ahead, talk your trash, say your things out of your insecurities, your jealousies, your doubts, your fears. Speak what you got to speak. But me, I'm hitting return to sender. I'm not taking it in. I'm not believing it because why? I have taken time to program myself, to listen to myself, to know myself, to speak to myself, the things that I know to be true, the words that I know to be true, the thoughts that I know to be true, the affirmations that I need to be, know to be true. And they didn't come from you, oh petty jealous friend, Uncle Bob, Aunt Ruth, Cousin Bill. Nuh-uh. They came from someplace bigger and higher. And I'm going to tune into that. So as you move into this holiday season, as you sit down at that table, as you drive over to the second cousin, brother, uncle person, and you're getting ready and you're sitting in the car with your kids, your spouse, your whatever, and you're like, oh, I can't believe the time they said this about us. Let it go. Stop feeding it. Stop nurturing it. Stop letting it live in your space. Now, just a caution because somebody's going to come back and go, but you don't understand how painful it was, or you don't understand. I do. First, I do. And second, I'm living in the future. I'm living where I'm going, not what happened in the past. And I don't want to keep going back to that painful place in the past by bringing up the words that they said, the thoughts that they spoke. Uh-uh. Now, I'm not going to put myself in harm's way. I'm not going to walk up and go, go ahead, Uncle Bob, say what you want about me because I've got the shield. I'm protected. I've said my affirmations. No, I'm not going to be that foolish. You know, I'll say good morning, Uncle Bob, and I'm going to stand at the other side of the party if I have to all day. But before I walk in that door, before I sit at that table, before I ask grace and praise Thanksgiving, I'm going to say, you know what? I'm letting it go. I'm just, you know what? I'm letting it go. It is not who I am. It is not what I want to be. It is not the voice that I want to have live in me. So I encourage you, encourage you, take time to find yourself, to center yourself, to get clarity. Hear those words, hear those negative thoughts, hear those things that have been living inside of you that are about to bubble up and become front and center, you know, the centerpiece on the table, so to speak, and just let it go. Just let it go. Because it has no power other than what you give it. And if you let it go, it will die in the corner of loneliness. All right? So I, I know, I know. I know it's hard. Holidays are hard. Man, the coaching meter, it goes way off the scale during the holiday season. It's a, it, it is like, you know... I, Sometimes I just think we should cancel it. We'd all be better off if we just rescheduled them out of the normal schedule because there's so much emotion and so much family and so much history and so much tradition and so many things that are going on. But you as somebody who is building a life of success, designing your life, creating your future, have got to be just that little bit more intuitive, that little bit more intentional about how you want it to go. You can break the patterns. You can break the old statements. You can break the old history. But you gotta focus in and you gotta do it. You can't just expect it to happen. And don't expect that other person to come up and go, you know the thing I said about you last Christmas? I'm really sorry. I hope you'll forgive me. Eh, quit waiting on it. Probably not gonna happen. Probably not gonna happen. That's just what I know. All right, well, it is a success coaching uh, live. It's a short edition because as you probably can tell, my kids are home and we got a busy day I did. We got all kinds of things on their schedule. Um, so again, I will be posting soon our author talk. Um, again, if you haven't picked up Allison's book, The Art of Imperfect Action, or uh, Steve Kay's, or I'm sorry, her case, it's Steve Kay's, uh, Let Me Sell You Something, and then um, Sebastian Richards, Lead Like a Superhero, or Larry... Larry's uh, Your Life Matters. Uh, we'll be talking about them uh, in December and January. And then I'm reading two other books. They're somewhere. So yeah, it's been a busy November read. Um, I will see you again tomorrow morning. 
what do you do when somebody in your family consistently treats you poorly? Like no matter what you do, you know what? <sighs> I've got family that does that. So I ain't, gonna, I ain't gonna like pick on your family. But there are those people that I think that stand at the bottom of other people's ladders and they try and knock it down because they don't have the strength to climb up it. And so, yeah, no matter what you do, they're like, yeah, well, that was just luck. Or, oh yeah, well, you know, it was all your friends and family that helped you out. Or, well, you know, it's not gonna last. It's only because it's, and they like find anything they can to just like kick your knees out. I appreciate the attention. Because clearly I must be standing out above average for them to feel they have to knock me back down to it. And I look at them and here in the South we have that bless their heart. If they spent as much time and energy knocking me down as they do building themselves up, I'd be praising them instead of them picking on me. I've just, I've, I've had to let it go. Honestly, and I know that sounds so simple, Allison, but I look at people and I'm like, Man, I don't know your story. I don't know the pain and the hurt and the disappointment and the anger and the frustration that you're living in, but I can see it the way you spread it across the world. I can see the way you speak to others and talk to others and, and paint the world with such negative and hatefulness and that you're always trying to take the other person down to something less than you and that must be a really hard place for you to live in that you don't believe you have enough strength to bring yourself up, that you instead try and bring others down. And when I look at them, and that's perspective, and I just like, man, you gotta be in a horrible place. If, if you can't find joy in somebody's success, if you can't find praise in somebody's accomplishment, if you can't look and just go, nice job, good work. Man, you must be in a, a, an empty place, a hard place, a dark place. And the only thing I can do is look at you and go, bless your heart, man. Man, if I, could, if I could heal your pain, if I could lift you up, if I could transform your life, let me know. <laughs> Thank you, Austin. Because people hurting hurt other people. You know, if you're coming from a place of hurt and pain and disappointment and fear, what do you have to give to the world but that hurt, that pain, that disappointment, that fear? And what often happens is those people who are living in pain and disappointment and hurt and fear that begin to paint the world with that same feeling, guess what they get back? More pain, more hurt, more disappointment, more fear, anger, isolation. And it becomes this vicious cycle. It's like the old man on top of the hill. You know, we all had that Mr. Grumpy up on the hill that, you know, don't walk on his grass, don't talk to him, throw sour apples on his, you know, that, man. I want to be the one person that walks up and knocks on the door and go, hey, dude, you got a really bad rap in the neighborhood. Sorry about it. I'm, I, I'm not going to buy into it. I'm going to let it go. Is there anything you need me to do? Like, dude, do you need a hand? Do you need some light? Do you need some love? Do you need something? Because I can live in a place of abundance and love and prosperity and joy and happiness. And it doesn't come from my, my cousins, my uncles, my brothers, my sisters, my neighbors. It comes from someplace so, that, so big and so large that I'm not afraid to share it with you, to give a little bit of it to you, to show you it. So when I hear those hurtful, negative, broken people, and I use broken people, we're all broken people, I just look at them. There's a whole lot I don't know going on behind the scenes. But if they're coming at me and they're trying to take me down and if they're the ones shit sitting across the table talking negative and being hateful and trying to take my success away from me, I just smile because it's like, hey, I must be doing something right to attract all this attention. I must be standing someplace well. And then I kind of quietly go to the side and like, hey, dude, Anything you need from me? Anything I can give to you? Anything you want from me? But when you do that, you better be ready to follow through and give. Because otherwise they're like, oh yeah, that time you said you were gonna come over and do this or help me with that and you never showed up. Then we're, then we're, then we're like tarnishing our own light. So I, yeah, I get it, Allison. We have, I trust me, trust me. And they say this with humor. I have that family member that everybody knows that if the two of us come like within each other's certain radius, it's like those North Pole, South Pole magnets. It's like, 
And every t in the past, it was, and you could just feel the tension building and the sparks flying. And finally, just like those magnets, I realized that if I just turn the other cheek, so to speak, turn the other side, we're okay. And I just like sit there and just smile. It's like, you know what? You know what? My joy does not come from you. My happiness does not come from you. My, my sense of value and purpose and worth and position in this world does not come because of you. And because it comes from me and it comes from above and it comes through me and hopefully to you. And so go ahead, bring it on. Because when I leave this dinner party, Thanksgiving dinner, dessert fest, whatever it is, I can walk out this door and just let it go. I don't have to carry it for you. I don't have to buy into it. I don't have to affirm it. I don't have to speak into it over and over again. I can just literally get two steps away from my car and go, oh yeah, I gotta let this go. Gotta let this go. Gotta drop that comment, got that. Okay, we're all clean, we're ready. Able to move on? Good, let's go. Part of the her holiday survival technique. <laughs> Trust me, Allison comes from the Midwest. They're people of little words. So the ones they use sometimes feel like they should matter most. Um, so, so I get you. I, 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 I sort of miss my Minnesota family this time of year. Um, they're good people up that way. So anyhow, I wish you guys a fantastic, uh, pre-holiday. I know this is a day we try and close down the work and, and get ready for the travel and pack up the hot dishes or casseroles or whatever you call them. I know over there in Italy, Greg, you're going to have a hard time finding a turkey. <laughs> we had the same problem in Uruguay. Um, make do with what you got. Some prosciutto, some good cheese, glass of wine. You're good. Call it your own Thanksgiving. I will see you guys tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. Eastern. Um, we do not have a fun friend Friday this week because, hey, it's the holiday season. People had to go. Good morning, Miss Vicky. How are you? Um, good to see you all jumping in. Hit the hashtag replay as you go back through. And I will uh, be checking in with you again at 8 a.m. Eastern. Again, this is Success Life Live. I hear little people moving towards my desk. Um, this is Success Life Live. My name is Eric Reed. I am your coach. Go out and let see. That's my little person. <laughs> Wait, let me see if I can do this. Anyhow, it won't tilt, but that's the little person. Clearly, she knows how to photobomb, huh? Do you want a minute? Yes. Yeah. Oh, jeez. <laughs> say good morning, but don't kick. Wave. Hi. See all those bubbles? Those are you. This is morning hair. Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Are we done? Um, you? I'm done. Are you done? Yeah. Say goodbye, everybody. Bye. Yeah. Bye. 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 All right. See you guys later. <laughs> Have a great day. Bye-bye, everybody.